lads, ready to get up there? needed here. Right. You know, although that last shot was a model, it's almost exactly the same as happened to me. I remembered a couple of things. Such as? Well, look, let's run through it again and I'll check over the points as they pop up. Aye, that's a good idea. Of course, that's a real spit. And there's our model again. Just like the real thing. Flaps fully down for a spit, tail well down too, and above all, reduced to stalling speed. Of course, it's usually best to ditch along the waves, you know, um, not straight into them. Sure. Of course, if you do go in at right angles, you'll, well, you'll get this sort of thing. I don't know what you think, but I'm flat out for seeing that again. Here, let's. You can't recover from an attitude like that. I once had to ditch in a Wellington. I remember the trick of getting along the swell, and it didn't do so badly. Now take a look at this diagram. Here's an aircraft descending in the right attitude for ditching. But look at his speed, much too high. Let's hope he'll remember his flaps before it's too late. Or he's remembered them, but what's happened is he's lowered his flaps fully so that his glide angle is far too steep. No attitude for an unexpected impact with the drink. But at least he's lowered his forward speed, but the rate of descent is far too high. Well, that looks like you're invited. Or just in time. Flaps rates of the medium setting, now his attitude, glide path, speed, and rate of the center ideal. Not bad. Well, that diagram told the story pretty well. Let's take another look at it. Maybe someday it'll be useful to remember. I think you're right. Attitude. Flaps. Speed down. Flaps up to medium. There he is. I once saw a chap in our squadron make a simply wizard ditching in a spit. Old Smokey Trent, do you know him? Smokey, indeed I do. I trained with him. Oh, and he did came you? in tail well down, reduced the stalling speed, and ditched right along the waves. Absolutely perfect. Swell, I'd like to have seen that. But tell me, can you do the same thing with the hurricane? Ah. Well, actually, the hurricane's worse than the spit for ditching. The radiator is exactly right to catch the water and upend the plane. Now, this is the sort of thing that happens. Here's a chap who's giving his radiator every possible chance to write him off. Just look at this again. I 
can be done, you know. What are the main points to remember? Oh, there are many of them, really. But I should say the main points to remember are, well, three-point attitude and reduce the stalling speed. Mm -hmm. For instance, here's a hurricane doing about as well as it can. But would you attempt to put a fighter aircraft down on the sea unless you had to? That's what I'd like to know. No, if you can bail out, bail out. But that's not always possible. Maybe you're too low or you have to reach a ship. Now, if you can, roll her over and drop out every time. Get a one start on that fan, George. There's one thing I'd like to say that can never be said too often. Learn to recognize the condition of the sea. Aye, but that's all very well, but seeing a certain type of sea from the shore or a ship is one thing, but seeing it from a thousand feet is quite another. <laughs> Lord, yes, it's always rougher than you think. Mm-hmm. You must learn to recognize the difference between confused sea and rough sea and between rough sea and long ocean swell. Now, for example, here's long ocean swell with the tops blowing off. The tops may be a long way apart and the troughs very deep. The way to ditch is along the swell. Here he comes. He's down about as good a position as he can hope for. This is the kind of thing that can happen if you try to ditch into the face of a heavy swell. In fact, into is the word. Of course, you, you've got to make up your mind what the sea is like while you've still got enough height. About uh, a thousand to five hundred feet. Yes, that's about it. If you leave it till you're pretty well down on the deck, well, it's, it's too late to do anything about it. Now, here's a view from a thousand feet of, well, what did you call it? It's a confused sea. A few white crests, wind about twenty miles an hour. Even in this case, it would be advisable to ditch along the waves. If you see a good many crests, you might rightly assume that the wind speed is about 30 miles an hour. Once again, it's better to ditch along the waves and not into them. You can often get a pretty good idea of wind speed and direction of wind from the sea itself. In open sea, of course, waves move with the wind. What about some gen on glassy calm? Well, in that case, the, the trouble isn't estimation of wind. There isn't any that can help you much. The difficulty is to see the water at all. And that means you can't estimate your height. But every now and again, you might spot what the sailors have christened Willy Walls. If you know anything about boats, that's a tremendous help. Mm -mm. I've never taken an aircraft over sea in daylight yet without taking a good look at every ship and sailing craft in sight. Then, if trouble does come, you've already made up your mind about the speed and direction of wind. Now, here's a model of a fishing boat. There's not much wind, but it should be obvious that what wind there is is dead astern. You ditch in the direction of bow to stern, but ditch well ahead of the boat so it can pick you up easily. Now, this is the reverse. The boat is beating into wind. She's driving forward on the principle of a wedge. In a fairly calm sea, you ditch rather in the same direction as the course of the boat. For my part, I usually look for a wisp of smoke someplace. Yes, well, in the English Channel, for instance, you can nearly always see a steamship somewhere. Sure. Here is a ship proceeding at low speed. The smoke is on the port quarter. That means the wind is on the beam. Here's a different situation. Smoke trail forward on the port side. Where's the wind coming from? Remember, the ship is traveling as well as the wind. The wind direction must therefore be calculated according to two things. First, speed and direction of the ship. Second, the smoke trail. Like this. Somewhere within the angle made by the ship's course and the smoke trail. I saw a former make a ditching in the Mediterranean. The neatest thing you ever saw. Now this is the real thing they shot, not a model. See how he holds off? A three-pointer. One of the ships in our convoy picked him up. 
That was a bit quick. It certainly was. Let's see it again. Okay. Mm, the, the ground loop does help, but it's not a thing to try for. Aye, there is that about it. Now, here's a model of a former ditching. There is sometimes a tendency for a land plane pilot to begin thinking in terms appropriate for a flying boat. Well, that's wrong. If you start treating a Lancaster in the same way that you treat a Sunderland, you'd get a pretty poor show. What's your method of approach? Her attitude in relation to the surface. See, the angle's quite different from that of a land plane. See how neatly she parts the water and flames along. Now let's look at a Lancaster, trying to make a level of lighting like a flying boat. The speed required to maintain control in this attitude would have to be nearly double the normal ditching speed. The aircraft's not strong enough to stand a cloud like this, so she breaks up and sinks quickly. Now, this is the sort of damage you'd expect to find. Have you uh, finished with that one, sir? Just a second, will you? All right, sir. Too bad. Oh? Hmm. Here, take it away. Cigarettes, eh? No, thanks. Don't use them. Hmm. Cigarette? No. That reminds me of a point about bomb doors. Bomb doors, yes. That point ought to be made. If you got bombs aboard, get rid of them quickly. Bomb doors take time to operate. But if you haven't got time, keep your bombs on. But make sure they're safe. Sure. Well, this is what happened to the guy who forgot his bomb doors were open. That's the water in nicely, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the attitude of the aircraft must be three-pointer, medium flaps, and bomb door shut. There'll be two impacts when she strikes. A slight impact when the tail strikes. And a severe one when the nose comes down. Yes. Yes, I see. The deceleration on the main impact is usually very great. That's why crews at ditching stations must wait for the second impact. Otherwise, you get thrown forward and hurt. But supposing you haven't got all your engines on a heavy aircraft, what's the best thing to do? The great point to remember is to keep your engines if you can. When it's certain you can't reach the coast, well, make the big decision while you've got four motors. Now here's a Liberator with two motors left. It's enough to fly with, and the ditching's not bad. Notice, it's along the troughs. Now here's a Lancaster, also half powered. A very much better ditching. If you've got all four motors, you'll have better control over the angle of approach and the rate of descent. Also, because of the slipstream over the wings, you can afford to approach slower. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a Lancaster with all four motors. It's a perfect ditching. Let's see it again. Suppose your 
two good motors are both on the same side. Well, it's better to use the inner one only to lessen the swing. Adjust the throttle so that rudder is needed as little as possible. If a ditching has to be made at night, switch on your landing light. Now here's the sea, dark and oily. And here's the effect of the landing light. Helps a lot. Well, that's practically all the story. But maybe I'd like to check over the main points again. If the waves are big, ditch along them like this. Stalling speed, three-pointer attitude. If you go at right angles to big waves, maybe you remember the spit part. Remember your flaps. His attitude's all right, but the speed far too high. Well, that's got the speed down, but look at the glide angle. That's better. Now what's wrong with this guy? Of course, he's forgotten his bomb door. And this hurricane pilot seems to have forgotten about his radiator. A simple case of wrong end. Whereas this pilot took thought for the morrow. Sea recognition is a bigger subject than most people realize. It's always rougher than you think. Whenever you see a ship of any kind, take a good look at it. The wind is from, yeah, and this one? Yeah. This boat's tacking pretty well in the wind, so come up from her stern and ditch ahead so that she can pick you up. You remember that shot of an actual Fulmar? He gets down to stalling speed and holds off in a three-pointer. And if it's a big aircraft, the same principles still apply. A ditching like this, and there's every hope of England, home and beauty. Nailu here. Yeah? Thank you. 